A big part of what makes the Star Wars universe so enchanting is that all its crazy creatures, robots and spacecraft have a real physical presence on screen. Starting with the first movie in 1977, the Lucasfilm effects team has worked magic with practical effects, creating worlds where the vehicles sputter and shake, the droids creak and clank, and the aliens cast imposing shadows. Everyone and everything seems bound by the laws of gravity. That makes the action sequences more nail-biting and gives the comedy more slapstick sting. This week's episode, is pretty much 40 minutes of chase scenes and fights, interrupted by some of the series' funniest gags to date. Directed by Peyton Reed, best known for the buoyant teen comedy, Bring It On, and the wonderfully imaginative Marvel movie, Ant-Man, and written by Jon Favreau, this chapter is a charmer, primarily because so many of its thrills and jokes are rooted in that essential Star Wars physicality, from the bulky enormity of Mondo's ship to the adorable tininess of the child. If nothing else, this episode compensates for the season 2 premiere's relative lack of Baby Yoda by filling nearly every spare second with adorable toddling and cute reaction shots. Sometimes, Reed and Favreau build exciting TV out of almost nothing. In the opening sequence, the Mandalorian and the child are speeding back to Mos Eisley when they get waylaid by bandits. This sequence features a lot of the lo-fi props, effects and stunts that make the Star Wars universe so believable, as real ropes and hunks of metal fly at characters' heads. The scene then ends with some good, dry goofing as Mondo trades his jetpack to the child's would-be kidnapper before remotely activating the device and sending the bad guy hurtling to his doom. The fatal crash happens deep in the background, like seeing Wile E. Coyote fall to the bottom of a canyon in a Road Runner cartoon. Mondo looks at the child and shrugs. Then the pack settles gently to the ground near our hero before abruptly flopping over. It's the perfect punchline. In a broad sense, one could argue this whole scene is unnecessary given that it has very little to do with the rest of the episode, beyond reinforcing the idea that the child is still in grave danger. But it's a hoot, and it sets the tone for the next half hour of daring do and deadpan comedy. Most of the episode is about an assignment Din Djarin takes as a favor to Peli Mato. A humanoid frog beast, referred to only as, the passenger, or as, frog lady, has a jar of her eggs to take to a new planet, where her husband is waiting to fertilize them and save their species. The catch is that Mondo's ship, the Razor Crest, can't go into hyperspace on the trip, lest the jump scramble those eggs, so to speak. So they have to creep along, avoiding pirates and warlords. There are further complications. For one thing, Din can't understand a word his passenger says, 